All right, let's jump in. We have two phones and a bunch of accessories to check out. Motorola has well outfitted this review package for the Moto Z and the Z Force, and unlike some other modular phones, which we won't mention, we can jump right into showing you the initial batch of Moto Mod add-ons. Now, taking a quick look at what's in the Moto Z box, we've got the phone, of course, which I almost dropped. That's awesome. Moto includes a wood grain backplate, which is a nice touch. We got some papers, which I'll totally read after I'm done with this video. There's a turbo charger, though it's important to note that the cable is built in, and there is no separate USB-C cable in the box for folks who connect their phones to computers. And as these Motos lack headphone jacks, we get a headphone adapter that plugs into the USB port. This handy little strap also helps keep your headphones connected to the adapter, though it does add a little bit of bulk. And cracking through the Z Force box, I almost dropped this phone too, and it's outfitted almost exactly the same as its leaner brother. Alongside the phones, we have the Tumi battery back, the Lenovo projector, and the JBL speaker back. Uh, plus, Verizon also sent along this handy carry case to keep all of your Moto Mods well organized. Nice touch there. Walking around the phone hardware, little has changed since the Lenovo Tech World unveiling event, but moving to a dark front face keeps the overall appearance cleaner than the dots and sensors we saw on the white panel Moto Z. These are sleek and well-built phones. These devices share largely the same overall platform, similar internal specs, though the Z Force includes the shatter-resistant display, a higher resolution camera, and a significantly larger battery. It's thicker and taller, but Moto engineers have done something really clever with the tapers here sliding to the rear of the phone. These line back up with the dimensions of the regular Moto Z, so the two can share the same Moto mods. This might mean future Motorola's won't be constrained to exactly the same dimensions, so long as the camera is the same shape and same distance from the bottom pins. This is very clever. Very early impressions, these phones feel nice in the hand, but using at least a mod backplate will probably be the norm. I just don't see us using these phones naked, and we'd probably want to keep those pins clean on the bottom. The side buttons are are clicky, but there's not a lot to delineate the feel between the power and the volume buttons. The fingerprint sensor is a touch on the small side, but it is a quick performer. Like we mentioned on the Moto G, however, it feels strange to use this hardware to turn the phone on and not have it also double as a home button. A long press on this sensor turns the phone back off. I'm not used to that at all. It's not bad, but it's really unfamiliar. Bottom of the phone is home to the USB-C port. Top of the phone holds a micro SD and SIM card tray. The back of the phone is home to the camera bulge up top and Moto Mod pins at the bottom. And the front face holds the 5.5 inch Quad HD AMOLED display with a five megapixel front facing camera that also has its own flash. The first boot happens radically fast. It would probably jump even quicker were it not for this Verizon intro. And the setup process is reasonably smooth, though there are a lot of Verizon add-on menus before dumping you into your home screens. I also find it a bit disappointing that the phone will finish the initial setup on LTE and that it never asked me to sign into my home Wi-Fi. Verizon must really need me to use their data. And of course, there's quite a bit of value-added software pre-installed. Caller ID, Verizon Cloud, a gems game, Empire game, whatever this is, Hotels.com, Message Plus, NFL Mobile, Slacker, Verizon Navigator, and Verizon Protect and most of these can be disabled. Otherwise, we have a pretty clean Moto-style build of almost stock Android. I actually wish we had a few more options to play with, as the home screens are pretty stark. I accidentally left on the option to add icons to the home screen installing apps, but NBD, we can just delete these home screens, but no, we can't. There's no way to change the grid size. It's just a 4x4 grid of 16, even though five icons look just fine below in this dock. Maybe if we remove the Google search, nope, that just stays up there as empty space. And our main home screen is always the leftmost screen, so I'll probably be installing Nova Launcher to replace this. A quick look at the Moto Mods, this connection method is very secure. Magnets snap the mod to the phone, and a little pin here helps lock the mod in place. There's a tiny bit of wiggle, but it holds together very well and easily supports the weight of the phone. For mods that contain their own batteries, we have power indicators that allow you to see the capacity of the mod without having to snap it onto your phone. And the JBL speaker also has a handy USB port to charge the mod directly, a hardware option we hope to see on more mods in the future. The install action here is instant. Snap the mod on, the phone chimes, and it's ready to go. No hardware swaps, battery pulls, or resets required. This really does feel like the first proper joint venture between Motorola and Lenovo, 
and the Moto Zs give off a stellar first impression. How do these two perform in real-world conditions? What's the difference in camera performance or battery life? And what exactly do these mods really bring to the table? Well, you'll just have to stay tuned for our future Moto Z coverage. Full reviews on all of this gear are coming soon. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for our future Moto Z coverage and hit that thumbs up button for a little extra positive reinforcement. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next video.